Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Community Board One is now called to order. Can I have the roll call, please? <coughs> Community Board One is now called to order. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte, Here. Louis Baricelli, Gina Barrow, Here. Moses Bondo, Eric Rosidas, Thomas Burroughs, Iris Cabrera, Phil Caponegro, Phil Ca Frank Carbone, Stephen Chesler, Here. Mike Chiricella, Here. Teresa Cinciata, Here. Joshua Cohen, Here. Arthur Dimonowski, T. Willis Elkton, Here. Julia Amanda Forbster, Here. Samuel Francois, Chairperson Fuller, yeah. Emily Gallagher, Vincent Gangone, Joel Gross, Sonia Iglesias, Moisha yeah. Indy, Rosina Kaminsky, <laughs> Brian Kunis, <laughs> Joel Landau, Marie Lianza, Joel Lowe, Georgia O'Mear, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeever, Here. Toby Moskowitz, Mark Needleman, Simon Newstein, <laughs> Rabbi Niederman, Karen Yemen, Mary O'Damara, Rabbi Pearlstein, Janice Peterson, Here. Isaac Topher, Here. Robert Solano, <laughs> James Stewart, Del T, Tommy Torres, Maria Vieira, Stephen Weidberg, Here. Simon Weiser, Tessa Wilson. Thank you, Jerry. Can I have approval of the agenda, please? Phil uh, Weisberg, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. The public session is now open. First item on the agenda is 336 Graham Avenue. Is there anybody here to present on that item? MDZ Restaurant Corporation? Okay, next item on the agenda is 289 Grand Street, Jay Goldstein. Good evening, Jay Goldstein for the applicant. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. I'm here on behalf of uh, 289 Grand Street Unit LLC and their proposed tenant uh, F45. We're here tonight for, to ask for a special permit for a gym to be located on the ground floor in a portion of the cellar of this existing building. The building is located on the north side of Grand Street between Roebling and Havemeyer. It's a four-story building with a commercial ground floor, residential above. The proposed PC will occupy the entirety of the first floor and then, and then 1,222 square feet of the cellar. The gym is a high-intensity training, which means that there is no um, open gym space. It's really just classes where they come in and there are different stations within the gym and every day is a different tri a different class. There are 25 to 30 people per class and every, as I mentioned, every day is a different exercise. There are 27 different exercises that this gym um, offers. So if you come every day, you essentially have a new workout every day. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. to 9 p.m with the earliest class at 6 a.m. and the latest class ending at 8.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with your earliest class at 8.30 p.m., latest class ending at 5.30 p.m. The building, uh, when, when built out, the space will, be, will have a fire alarm sprinkler and be fully ADA compliant, and there's significant sound attenuation which is going to be put in place when the space is built out. How are you? Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? No questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Likewise. Is MDZ restaurant here yet? No? Okay. Uh, do we have any, uh, anybody want to speak on liquor license? The next item on the agenda. We don't have anybody want to speak on the liquor license? No one signed up to speak on the liquor license? Okay, do we have a quorum so we can go into our board meeting? That concludes the public session.
so we can start. Okay, so we can, um, can we have a moment of silence, please? That concludes our public se uh, hearing session. Can we have a moment of silence, please? It, can we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Can I have an uh, approval of the agenda? I'm sorry, roll call, please. Gina Argento? Here. Bogdan Bakarowski? Here. Lisa Pamonte? Here. Louis Baricelli? Here. Gina Barrow? Here. Moses Bondo? Here. Eric Rosinas? Here. Tom Burroughs? Here. Iris Cabrera? Here. Phil Caponegro? Here. Frank Carbone? Here. Here. Stephen Chesler? Here. Michael Curicello? Here. Teresa Cinciata? Teresa Cinciata? Present. Joshua Cohen? Here. Arthur Dibonowski? T. Willis Elkin? Here. Julia Amanda Foster? Here. Samuel Francois? Chairperson Fuller, yeah. Emily Gallagher, Vincent Gangone, Joel Gross, Sonia Iglesias, Moisha yeah. Indig, Rosina Kaminsky, Ryan Moody, Joel Landau, Marie Lianza, Joel Lowe, Giorgio Mayer, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeever, yeah. Toby Moskowitz, Martin Needleman, yeah. Simon Newstein, Rabbi Niederman, Karen Nieves, yeah. Mario Dabara, yeah. Rabbi Pearlstein, Janice Peterson, Here. Isaac Sofer, Here. Rob Solano, Here. James Stewart, Del T, Tommy Torres, Maria Vieta, Stephen Weidberg, Here. Simon Weiser, Tessa Wilson. Thirty members answering the call. Thank you, Jerry. Can I have an approval of the agenda, please? Because the cookies are here. That's right. Yeah. Sulfur, can I have a second, please? Uh, Sonia? Iris, Iris, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Can I have approval of the minutes, please? Still? Sulfur, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions, motion carried. Committee reports. Women's issues. Um, basically, we, uh, the women's issues had a large meeting the other night we had the executive director of the Commission on Gender Equity from City Hall, and uh, we have bringing up four issues. We had a large group of still quite concerned that the women's swim is still lingering and the pool is not being used in, to replace the women not swimming. So we understand that the Parks Department has uh, put in uh, an exemption to, uh, to request an exemption, and I think I mentioned last time, and I won't stay long on it because we're moving so fast this meeting, that uh, the only way you can really deal with men having special needs and women having special needs is to ask the Human Rights Commission for an exemption. Or you're grandfathered in, which we probably could have been grandmothered in, on the pool. So that's how it is. So the mayor, at one meeting said that he was gonna go back and ask for an exemption. We fear that he's asking for one hour, which would be totally unsuitable because it takes two hours to get even the amount of women trying to swim in to the pool. So I just wanna say that. So we're, we're now exhausting the exemption and that we had another exemption group that applied for the proper amount, and we don't know what the mayor applied for, so he may be proper too is that Assemblyman Lento, uh, uh, Councilman Reynoso, and Councilman Levin 
put together a request for exemption to the Human Rights Commission for the proper amount of hours. And the question legally, Marty, which is we're not getting into, is that their reading is that any, that they should have a right to ask for an exemption. And some people are saying that only the agency that's affected by the request can ask. So that's where we are on exemptions. And that means that still we have over 100 women or more that paid money last year for use of the pool that are can't use it. And that issue of do they get their money back or not back is hardly making the, the line. And the women themselves are saying that they often are not getting the two lifeguards that Commissioner Silver had said he would make sure there are two women lifeguards, they're not there. So 45 women get to go in and not 90. And they're waiting. So a lot of the women who have 10 and 12 children and who are mainly over 50 are waiting an hour to get to use the swimming pool on a pool that's not being used. So I just want to keep putting up about usage and special programming to make sure that we have full use of our pools. But the big issue of that, and I'll end that part, is that the women have laid out again. So you have to take in that most of the women have laid out their health needs that for many, and they've documented proof from doctors and others, that by swimming two to three times a week, they have been able to deal with the, the, uh, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera, cholesterol, and all this. So it's uh, the way the assemblyman is looking at it is that this is a major serious health issue. And AARP and other groups that are dealing with aging are saying that older women in general, older women in the senior centers, are not getting proper recreation and the parks and the parks department are really not taking into consideration their priorities needs. So that's the pool and that's where it is. And the other issues that are coming up is that we're still negotiating with the transportation committee, which I think he can report on about the two elevators that have been identified by the women's issue committee. It's elevator, right? that we want during this L change that there's an elevator in Greenpoint and Greenpoint Avenue with the G and we hope one of them on the, the Graham Avenue. And our final issue that we're beginning to work on and we're working with the Public Housing Committee is the fact that there is serious, serious problems with public housing and keeping public housing, financing public housing and it's not just the issue of Cooper Park regarding people trying to take the parking lot to sell it for private sector housing, which is the, the latest issue. And there is a public housing, and I'm sure Rabbi Niederman and Amanda and others will speak on that. But these are largely families headed by women. So we are wanting to get on people's attention span that low and moderate income housing is not poor people's housing. And women are poorer than men. And public housing and its survival is a really key issue that we are beginning to look at and want to meet with the public housing leaders more, but hoping that we can begin to make this community a demonstration district of trying some new financing mechanisms so we're not waiting for City Hall to determine what next it's going to do, but we come up with our own ideas. And we're hoping that all of you that work on poor people's housing will join in that. So those are the issues at this point. And we will have a meeting sometime in January. It's not established yet. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Landmarks. We did not have a quorum, but we, we also, we had one, um, there was one landmark issue that came to the Land Use Committee, um, which was 128 Greenpoint Avenue, which is a one-story garage um, building that had been a plumbing supply business that got, is being changed into a Mexican restaurant that came before the SLA Committee sometime within the year. They were a no-show at our, our they're doing changes to their front door and to their front window and fencing in the front of the building, but the architect failed to show up. So the committee, the five of us that were there, 
voted um, to turn down the 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 proposal until they if, until they come back to the committee, and they've since scheduled to come back to our meeting, which is going to be Monday the 11th. But so, do we need to vote on the fact that we voted them down, pending their coming back? Yeah. Okay. So I guess. I second it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want you voted. You want the committee voted down the proposal. Right. Pending their coming back and and actually presenting to the committee. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? Motion carried. In a way, though, it was sort of a blessing because we had also the other part of the meeting was we had invited a woman named Kelly Carroll, who is the community outreach person for the Historic District Council, to come to our meeting and talk to us about how to evaluate landmark issues. And, and she was great. She, she kind of went through, she talked, we talked about the different kinds of things that come before the committee, and she talked about various things to look at and different resources we could look at and kind of walked us through how to do it. And then we took, in the meeting on the 11th, there are actually gonna be three different landmark issues that come before us. So we took them each in turn, including 128 Greenpoint, and we talked about them, and she kind of gave us the lens through which to look at them and gave us suggestions for the questions to ask and really gave those of us that were present a really good understanding of how to, how to go forward. And there's on the, um, the committee report, her handout is attached, and her handout is really, takes you through what she explained to us. So I urge people to take a look at it because it's really helpful when, when we all vote on the landmarks issues. Thank you, Trina. Thank you. Transportation. Okay, so last night we met, um, and that's why you got the report today. Um, so, sorry about that, but it was unavoidable. Um, <clears throat> we talked mostly about um, filming, uh, and that took up the, the bulk of the meeting. Uh, this is a perennial favorite of uh, complaint in the neighborhood um, in terms of uh, overuse of uh, specific, specific um, Streets that get used all the time, the towing, the parking, um, taking up a, uh, too much parking. Um, we had a lot of people weigh in. I'll ask you all to read the report to get uh, all their individual comments. Um, the takeaway is that we're gonna keep looking at this issue over the next year. Um, Broadway stages, and I wanna thank Trina, uh, sorry, not Trina, I do wanna thank Trina, <laughs> but <laughs> for bringing the Oak Street folks out, um, but also uh, Gina Argento. Um, there she is, hi, um, for bringing Warren um, Cohen, who has uh, been um, hired by Broadway Stages to deal with the city, to deal with uh, community groups, um, and um, basically any stakeholder that has an issue with uh, uh, overuse or abuses of, uh, of the film industry. And so we're gonna be reaching out, uh, Emily's not here tonight, but uh, Emily and I have already spoken with Warren and we're setting up a meeting uh, for the first week of January, um, and we'll be bringing um, the results of that meeting back. And uh, Rolf Carl, who some of you know, is also um, has also been invited to that meeting. Um, Rolf is uh, part of the Milton Street Association. He's been fighting uh, for um, responsiveness from the city on film issues for a long time, uh, and had a lot to say last night. Um, And, as, and again, there's a lot in the report that, uh, that we talked about last night. I'll ask you all to read it and feel free to email me any questions or comments. I'll be happy to get back to you uh, as quickly as I can. Um, second item was uh, TLC licenses, nobody appeared. Uh, we went into old business. Um, we're gonna continue to work with the office to look at uh, requests that have not been answered from either the DOT or the MTA. Um, or other agencies that have uh, uh, transportation oversight. Um, we're gonna get answers to questions that have not been answered yet. Um, so we'll be going forward with that. Um, I gave a short um, update on my call with Rob Marino from the MTA regarding the L train shutdown um, and where we're at with that. Uh, some of you were at the um, press conference this morning uh, over on Union. Um, we are, 
uh, still waiting for the meeting. Uh, they had promised November, then they promised it was supposed to be, our transportation meeting was supposed to be that, um, that MTA meeting uh, to have the, uh, the plan revealed on what they're going to do with the shutdown. Um, when I spoke to Rob uh, two weeks ago, he did say that they are planning to do it before the end of the year, sometime in January. Um, there will be outreach to elected officials uh, for individual meetings, also with uh, the leadership of the community board um, as well, before they roll it out to the public. Um, a lot of the issues uh, have to do with, um, we're waiting for DOT on a lot of things in terms of dedicating bus lanes, how that's gonna work with MTA buses and things like that. Um, so we are really on the clock with this because it's uh, coming up fast that they're gonna shut down that train. Um, so hopefully Rob is a man of his word um, and he will have an update for us this month. Um, and if we do uh, have that update, um, you'll all be aware of it. And if not, we'll try to get them at the January meeting. Um, and in terms of, uh, Jan, your, uh, your question about um, the um, elevators, uh, they are looking at elevators for Lorimer uh, Metropolitan. Um, they are also looking at opening up those uh, defunct stairwells. Um, they did not promise that they would do that, but they are looking at it. Uh, and also for the G train at uh, Nassau. So we're gonna be keeping them on point on that. Um, there's been uh, some requests to look at uh, chronically dangerous intersections. Um, a resident um, over on Kingsland Avenue almost got hit by a motorcycle um, over at Kingsland and Meeker, which has been problematic because of the L train, or uh, sorry, the L train, the uh, Cambridge construction. Um, we reminded the, the public that was there that each individual intersection is its own problem uh, from, the, uh, from the DOT's perspective. So you have to put in a formal request for a study um, for each one of those. So as they come in, we will be looking at them, and there are many. Um, the, um, then we went into new business. Um, Joey Verdi of the Oak Street uh, Block Association is, uh, and the Oak Street Block Association, I think is fair to say, is concerned about um, the uh, huge construction project that's going on at Oak and Quay. And um, he's already seen an increase in truck traffic uh, for the, um, uh, the demolition that's happening there and the excavation. Um, and because of the unique traffic pattern at Oak um, and Franklin and Quay and West and that whole area, um, it really should require uh, some kind of uh, special study by the DOT. So if the Oak Street Association puts in a formal request, we will then um, look to the uh, DOT to, uh, to appear and we'll probably try to schedule a special hearing on converting um, on converting uh, Oak, not, not this stop sign, this is something different, converting Oak into a uh, one, uh, two way. Uh, no, one, one, no trucks. No trucks. Yes, truck I'm sorry. Can come to West and back. To West and from West on Quay and right. not have to go on Oak or some of the other smaller residential. Right, thank you. So it's a, it's a traffic pattern change uh, and then a truck restriction um, on Oak and Quay, uh, respectively. Um, that would take a special hearing, um, and we will try to convene that in the beginning of the year, probably January, well, not January, but probably February or March. The, the deal is. Um, uh, residents of Manhattan Avenue, including Mr. Tom Burroughs, uh, <laughs> reported uh, a, um, an accident uh, yesterday morning, um, and the, the, the member of the public who appeared, I don't know if she's here tonight, uh, said that she has witnessed uh, or heard about at least uh, five accidents in the last three months, and that should be close to triggering a special study by the DOT. So um, we will look at that crash data and uh, take it up with the DOT. Um, and Manhattan Avenue, besides the crashes uh, that have been reported um, down close to Meeker, I think a lot of you know that it's a raceway from Metropolitan Avenue down to Meeker. and. Um, it's something that has never been addressed, uh, and it really does warrant a special, um, a special study to look at some kind of uh, traffic control, either midway down the down the block or or something like that, whether it's a stop sign or something like that. We will address it again. We're going to address it again. Oh, oh, sorry. I I take it back. 
Fair enough. It has been addressed, but it has been denied. So we're going to take it back and get it addressed again. Thank you, Jerry. Um, that is Manhattan Avenue. Um, some of you remember, I think it was two months ago, uh, two, uh, two women came to uh, make an announcement about a film that they had produced on the uh, Brooklyn Queens ex extender or the, the trolley. Um, it's called Gentrification Express, Breaking Down the BQX. Um, I've spoken with them, uh, and uh, the committee seemed to think it would be a good idea to have them come and screen their film. It's a 17-minute film. Um, I'll be speaking to them again to try to schedule a, a time for that, and we're going to try to get Swinging 60s available for that screening so that you can all come and watch. Um, uh, I think it's an important part of the conversation. The BQX is a little bit controversial. Um, the, the folks on the project have come to the Transportation Committee before to present, and there have been questions and concerns about it, so uh, continuing that dialogue is important. Um, another member, um, made a point about um, the bus stop uh, next at Graham and Grand. And um, since they relocated the bus stop for construction at 738 Grand, uh, it's the bus stop is not, it's a transfer bus stop. And it is not long enough to accommodate the transfer um, at that location. So, you know, buses are parking, they're either double parking and waiting for the transfers or they're parking in the, in the, bu uh, the bike lane. So that's creating a, a hazardous traffic pattern. Um, we're going to look at MTA uh, to see what we can do about either getting, uh, taking away another parking space, sorry, um, but uh, that's metered parking over there anyway, but um, to extend it so that there is an appropriate amount of space. Um, and there's also an issue, um, Dell, with 738 being an abandoned um, construction site possibly. Um, they, he had said that um, there's been complaints that they didn't shovel their, their walk at all last year, like hasn't really been any. 738 grand by the bank, by Chase. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just bringing it up. Well, we can talk about it. Take a look at it. Um, there was uh, Sarah Lilly requested from the member of the public requested that uh, the city bike dock at North Henry Richardson be lo relocated to Kingsland Avenue. Um, right now, what's happening is the people that use that bike dock. They go against the traffic to get to Graham because nobody goes to Kingsland to go to Wood Point. What's the point? They're the they're appara apparently they're taking that that route to get to the and then they're redocking at Graham uh, to get on the train there um, and other issues. So that's uh, we're going to look at that. And part of that is uh, part of Karen's request um, to have. Uh, City Bike through DOT look at um, underutilized city bike locations. There's been a number of uh, requests for uh, city bikes around Cooper Park um, and other locations around the city, and Bogart is like underutilized, right? So um, because they're not putting in any new docks in uh, Brooklyn, they're focused on Staten Island right now, um, we want to um, you know, work with City Bike and DOT and reallocate um, sites that would be better utilized, and especially with the um, uh, the L train shut down, it's going to be more critical to have them located in more uh, logical places. So we'll be looking at that over the next year. Um, and a parent who has a child at uh, PS 147 is concerned about the intersection at Bushwick, uh, at McKibben and Siegel, that, uh, about it being dangerous. Those of you that know that, inter the, that, that array of streets uh, will understand what she's talking about. It's, uh, it's a little <coughs> confused. Um, over there, that was not her only point. Her point also was that uh, the cement company that's there, they've been having problems with um, them not really respecting pedestrians. There's been idling um, and some other issues uh, with that uh, cement company. So we're going to be taking a look at that. Um, I'll either go over there and see what's happening or and report back to the committee. But um, we're going to keep an eye on that and see uh, if it requires some, some action. <clears throat> um, we do not have a date for the next transportation committee. I will get that to everyone as soon as possible. And, um, and I see, I see uh, uh, Tony Argento is here, and I want to thank you, too, for coming last night. It was really helpful. And, and really, again, thanks for hiring Warren to, to address these issues. The end. That's it. Uh, Simon. Sir. I got, a, I got a, uh, an email regarding uh, Due to the closing now of the, the L train, they're going to be adding buses. And I, I was told that the bus will be diesel buses. Mm -hmm. 
how about if we send a letter to the MTA to uh, ask them it should be uh, electric buses? I see some other areas also they uh, they change it to electric buses. Can, can we send a letter to the MTA and request that they should, because uh, they're going to be increased, much more increased the buses, and the LTA is going to be shut. Can we send a letter to the MTA and request that? I don't see why not. Um, uh, I think it's good. They are now. That's a motion. Does anybody would like to second it? Uh, Karen, all in favor? Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. We'll send a letter to MTA asking them for electrical buses. By the way, don't worry about MTA. MTA bought like 27 diesel buses. You have to tell them that people are out of the strongly support the electric bus. Why they do that is hard to understand. Yeah, I know Transportation Alternatives has really been on their case about this issue. Um, yeah, that's true. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll send that letter and we'll see what they say. And hopefully they'll, that'll be part of their presentation when they, when they do come to make the presentation. Um, Madam Chair, there was a question in the back. A member of the public? No? Oh, sorry. Sorry, brother. I, I'll talk to you after, if that's okay. Iris. I don't know exactly uh, how we're going to look on, on this situation, but I don't know if you are aware of whatever is happening uh, in the post conflict on South Fork. They're kind of taking all the street parking, all the trolls. And I even take a video because I was walking and we have a lot of seniors who cross that corner, especially going to the city center and also to the clinic. And the troll was almost kind of in the middle of the Marcy Avenue and Borinkin Place, and I went and I asked for the manager. The lady was so rude, but it's crazy because they they on, they only know use the side, kind of like a half of the street, but also they parking all the truck in um in the area they the parking. Yeah, yeah, the bike lane. Yeah, so, <laughs> but also in, in the street, you have to kind of go in the middle of the street to see if the any car is coming, and especially for seniors that they are like. You know, they, they, I see the lady and they don't, she, she wasn't sure what to do, so I, I, I had a video, I actually sent it to Sonia, she said she's going to send it to you guys, so to see what we can do, because this is, this is crazy, and I don't want to wait until someone gets yeah, killed or dangerous. I, I would suggest you send the, the video to the office, and we can send a letter to the postmaster and make them aware of the prior problem. Don't we still have somebody who's on the post office advisory committee? I'm still on there, and Simon is still on there. Okay. <coughs> but they haven't had any meetings. The last meeting, the last uh, meet, the meetings have been canceled for the year, so they haven't had any meetings. There. That's why I suggest she send us the video, and we send a letter to the postmaster and make them aware of the problem. Okay? Anybody? Yeah. Yes, Simon. I would like to add to the problem with the post We at the community board we advocated they should put. Uh, uh, parking meter, and all the employees are using up their space. Mm -hmm. and it was for the benefit of the of the community. They would take the packages, not have to go park and get you know tickets and all that. And they use they use it all up. They're abusing it. It's, it's a shame. Yes. What a shame. So so what you're saying is that is that the employee where we had meters installed, right. the uh, the employees are parking their cars right. all day, so cars are not moving and people can't pull in and pull out. Right. That's right. You can't pick up packages. You can't fill up packages. It's a shame. We work very hard at this. Well, Simon, they have a, they have a parking lot over by the Meeker. They're not using that parking lot anymore for the trucks. Or they have too many trucks. I know what you're talking about, but she's talking about the trucks also. I know we had the meters put over there, and that's a new uh, problem, is that the employees are taking the spots, and they're parking there all day, and they're feeding the meters, and that's not helping the community. That's what you're saying. So, But I'm asking you about the, the lot that they use to park the mail trucks. They don't use that anymore, or they have too many trucks? Too many trucks. I think it's too many trucks. That's too many trucks? Very big. The streets are filled with their, with their trucks. Yeah. In, including yeah. under the, the including a Negro under the, uh, the under the Amazon packages. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. We should have them in for the transportation committee either January or February. Good idea. We should put them on the agenda and have them in. Yeah. Let me know. The postmaster or somebody. Well, you can either put them on the agenda. We can have them come to the full full board. We probably need to do both. Sure. Yeah. 
Okay, so can you do that? Absolutely. Meantime, I think we'll send a letter from the office and making them aware of the problem. Because I think I don't think it's gonna clear up because it's the holidays and they're very busy. So we need to make them aware of it so they can put some safety measures in. Yeah, so she's gonna send the video to the office. Thank you. That's it, Eric. I think we have sent letters about. Have we ever communicated about that? I don't think we've gotten an answer though. Or, or the answer has been like it's not warranted. Right. The answer was no. I mean, but like more specific than that. Yeah. You mean the Grand Street end? Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to move the police station. The Grand Street and the Union one too. Yeah, they put a police station on the mezzanine, so they don't want to open that. But like I said, I did talk to Rob Marino at MTA, and he said they they are considering it. Whether what that means, I don't know. He doesn't really make. Are there decisions. any other questions? Thank you, Eric. Thank you. SLA. Good evening. SRA committee had a meeting on the November 20th, and that was one of the shortest meetings that we ever had because usually we have 13, 15 applications, and this time we just have a seven. So on the item number one, new legal license, um, we have four applications, okay? And except, as you can see in the report, the greenhouse hospi hospitality is postponed. It should be okay. And new Adler, the 58 Mercy Avenue, is listed as is postponed. It's also okay. So from this list, what you have, new leaking license is for, that's committee recommended, to approve is two that is postponed and one application is denied because the applicant did not come. So can I have the vote on that item number one? New application, please. Solano, Solano and Bermonte, all in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. On the item number two, renewers application our committee recommended to renew all the application. Can I have the vote, please? Gross. Oh, ending. What's your name again? My name? Yeah. <laughs> you second in the motion, right? My name is Michael Chiricello. Okay, second by Michael Chiricello. I don't, I, I, when I don't see faces that often, I don't remember names that well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And item number three, previously postponed items, that was four application, five application, actually all of the application were postponed again. So can I have the vote for that previously postponed items, please? Solano and Josh. Josh Cohen, all in favor? Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. And the SLA next uh, committee meeting is going to be held on Thursday, the December 21st. Thank you very much and have a happy holiday to the, everybody that I'm not going to see you before our next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Land use. Good evening. Um, as Trina mentioned, we had uh, three items. One of them, only one was uh, a land use matter. And this was an application to uh, legalize a, a physical culture establishment. Uh, the applicant runs a, a local franchise of a um, 
of a, a branch called the Bar Method. It's, it's really a ballet dance kind of studio. It has two studios, second floor of a commercial building. And they've been operating as of right. The uh, only thing that triggered their requirement to ask for a special permit is their desire to put in some shower facilities. So there were five of us, uh, which was not a quorum, but everyone at the committee felt that it should be approved. And so I would recommend that the, um, that the board approve the application. Bozina, uh, Tassel Wilson, all in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Abstentions? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, that concludes. Did anybody have a report that they didn't fill out a, a form? Marty, we can't have that. You know better. Yeah, we're going to have to change the bylaws on that one. Okay, we'll get up there and do a quick and you're on the B rule. Anytime anybody says they can be brief, watch out. So uh, we actually, um, uh, the committee met and we had a quorum, and we met in conjunction with the attendance committee as well uh, on, on issues involving membership and, and uh, removing people if they fail to attend meetings uh, of, of the board. And uh, we have a couple of proposed amendments uh, because the uh, borough president's office had advised us that the current process we have, which is automatic uh, vacancies, uh, is, is not appropriate, not acceptable, uh, and violates the charter. So we have a proposal just to make it a little bit more, follow, follow the recommendations to allow us to do it in a way that we're supposed to do it. So that, uh, that we're going to submit that, and the uh, jury's going to circulate that, the, the uh, district office is going to circulate that to the board members for the January meeting. They got a preview of it. Yeah. They got oh, it they got it. Okay, good. But they'll get a formal notice with the January meeting. Right, right. Part. So we'll satisfy the requirements uh, for amendments and the, by, and the uh, bylaws. But in addition, uh, a number of people raised a lot of other issues, which I'm just going to identify the issue. I'm not going to talk much about them, uh, but we're going to discuss them at the next meeting. Well, we haven't scheduled yet, so I'll have to start getting scheduled for the 2018 meetings, uh, at least proposed schedule. But uh, we'll probably meet sometime in January, hopefully. But anyhow, just the kinds of issues that came up in terms of membership were uh, more formally amending membership and participation in two committees. We right now, I think, say only one is required, uh, and we want to say two is required. Uh, which is really what we say in the application, but it's not included in the bylaws. Secondly, having the attendance committee come up with recommendations re with respect to mandatory attendance at committee meetings. We have no mandatory uh, participation requirements at committee meetings, and obviously that's important, and that's part of the fundamental work that we do. And thirdly, uh, defining attendance more completely, addressing such issues as the minimum percentage of time and or arrival and or departure times that might define whether a member's attendance is minimally sufficient to be deemed an actual attendance. Because uh, if you can just walk in and sign in and leave, that, that's not enough. So we want to discuss that in a more substantive way. And then lastly, issues about cell, cell phone usage during meetings. Somebody raised that. It's, it's, it's an issue. So, uh, so uh, both, committees, both committees, both the attendance committee uh, uh, chaired by uh, Rabbi Niederman and our committee will be discussing this and making more formal recommendations uh, as we go along. And we welcome more suggestions and comments and thoughts. I think it's important. I'm on now bylaws and attendance, which I didn't realize. Uh, that just to remind everybody here, without any big thing, is that we all care. It's not just about attendance. It's about the quality of the work that people do, because there's been a long time feeling that there is a part of the board that is really doing a huge amount of the work, and then there's another part that's not. And then there are people that don't attend, right? So it's not just attendance, but what we're looking at is attendance as an indicator. And we're looking at coming on time and leaving on time, not to punish. I think we just want to help clarify what it means to be a good uh, uh, person on the board, because a lot of people were never trained about what it meant to be a good person on the board. And we're very grateful for the group uh, that's been organized uh, uh, um, from Greenpoint, I think we should say, for their work on looking at what do other boards do and not do. So I just want to put out here that, that the Alice has been trying for over a year to up the ante of committees and attendance, but I know she means and we mean, because I, I love being late, 
is the is the fact that we need to have people really participate and know the issues and speak because otherwise there's many people who want to get on the board and I didn't know that till recently that people are signing up and not getting on and they are getting mad about the fact that people are holding seats that they're not using. So yeah, and that's we it. have no control on the, all the that and the mm -hmm. item is on the committee board. What? Yes. We have no control about people not being able to get on the board and this No, 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 I wanted to say it, but there are people the watching board. now. They want to know what we're doing. I, I want to say, I forgot to mention. Yeah, of course. To express, just to express appreciation to Sarah Riley. And as, as Jane mentioned, people who were recommending it actually uh, made copies of all the bylaws of the yes. other uh, community boards in yes. Brooklyn to show, compare how, how they right. do it. And, and we'll circulate that also for, uh, for everybody to look at, look at it also, but that was very nice and very interesting. Okay, all right. Well, I, just a question, the language is about five, there being a threshold of five absences. Is that five absences during a calendar year? Yeah. Yes. And so the, yeah. I guess my question is like going forward, are we looking, are we gonna be able to review absences from 2017, it seems like? We went through this process for 2016 already. Are we going to review 2017 and be able to make make a move to push people off with five absences? Well, you, can bring, you can bring other grounds, by the way. Not absences is, is not is, is, is the more automatic grounds, but if people are not functional in other ways, there's other grounds for removal and or just non-renewal. Uh, so that has to be recommended and can be reviewed and the, the and the uh, but. People can't be removed for other reasons as well. But he's asking, are we taking those people in 2017 oh, yeah. that didn't that, that that didn't attend the appropriate amount, and are we asking for their removal? He's no, asking that. Do we have to wait no, another no, year? No, 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 we did not satisfy the, the the bylaws were not correct in okay. terms of the mechanism. So wasn't the, the idea at the last of the November meeting that we would figure this out in the next month so we could vote today on amending the bylaws? Yeah, that's what we found out that really the notice ha is insufficient mm -hmm. and therefore we have to wait till the January meeting. But in any case, right. even if we change the bylaws now, it, uh, it, it, you have to give the notice and, and have, have a hearing uh, uh, before you can do it. So uh, as opposed to automatically removing people, the borough president's rules require uh, a, a hearing at least and, and an opportunity to reply. So we wouldn't we would have had the time to do it regardless. No. <laughs> okay. um, I, just, I just wanted to leave out there. I think that um, attendance at committees is, is super important right. and things, but I think that if we make um, attendance mandatory, we have to revise how we set the meetings because right now, oftentimes we get a week notice like, like the SLA is great. You guys have a set day. It's it's regular, and you can plan your schedule around it. But you're the only committee that actually has that, mm -hmm. and so I or women's committee. So there's I two added, committees. I yeah. Yeah. But I just think that like if we make mandatory it mandatory in committees, we have to have set dates. <laughs> right, right. Last year, last year I asked each chair to go in. I asked the each chair to sit down with Marie and do a calendar for their committee for the whole year. When, okay, so here as a committee chair that tried to do this, there wasn't a master calendar that I could look at that would tell me dates. I also don't know in October, in January, when my when I have to work. So it was that was difficult. If you said, here, let's all come the committee chairs together and let's figure out what set day of the month each of this is going to be, and as a group we did it, that would have been feasible. But I couldn't send you six dates because it was, my work schedule wasn't even, I could have sent you six dates, but it would have been complete nonsense it would have been fake okay they that's would have not to the, the point what we can do and if it's okay with marie and jared in the office what we can do we can set up a meeting with the chairs and the co-chairs and we sit down and do our calendar for the year can can we do that okay so what we'll do is we'll come up with a date to sit down and do this and we'll send out a notice and this can we do a date now can, can we do a date now? You want to wait and let us pick the date? Or, yes. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea because that way uh, maybe the people will change the committees if the dates don't work for them. It's possible that they may not be available that specific yeah. Well, day. they have the option to sit down and work it out where one can meet that date and the other one can't. So it gives you the, it gives you the option to sit down together and work out the dates. So do we want to choose a date now or do you want us to choose a date? Maybe what we do is meet, like, meet like an hour before the next meeting or something. No, we don't want to have no meetings before the meetings. 
uh, the first of the year, we'd like to have it uh, before the board meeting. January 4th, Wednesday. January 4th, is that good with everybody? Or is that too close after New Year's and everybody be still on holiday? <laughs> the chairs and the co-chairs to have a meeting so we can set our, our committee meeting calendar for the year. Can everybody hear that's a chair, uh, co-chair? Tom, are you listening? Can we say January 4th? January 3rd? Can we? Yes, uh, Doc. Okay, everybody, what about January 3rd? Let's say 6 o'clock, because people have to work. Some people get, you know. 6.30? 6 o'clock? 6.30. Oh, yeah. the of the committee also has to look at this. We can't try to the members. Open to trade policy. We can't make it free. No, it will be too much, Simon. It's like it is now. What we're going to do is we're going to set up January the 3rd at 6.30 for the chairs and the co-chairs, and they will come in and do their calendar for the year. Any committee person that cannot make the meeting, we would like you to inform your chair that you cannot make this meeting. That's all we ask, a person that can't make the meeting. What what somebody said was if we set at the ch can I have some order please? What was said was if the chairs and the co-chairs set up the meetings, what if some of the committee persons can't make these meetings? Okay, so that's good. So you, if the committees are set up their, com their committee meetings, then they'll have a meeting with their committee and go over the dates with their committee and see who can make what dates. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, Trina? If, if not, well, if, if let's say October comes around and people can't do it, you can switch within a month, you can switch if you need to. I mean, it's not, not that set <laughs> well, but we're just setting we're just setting up the dates, and once you meet with your committee, and you you know, you, majority of your committee can't make it, then we'll try to set up another date. But if you got you got five, ten people on your committee or eight, and one can't make it, I don't see no reason to cancel the meeting. Maybe we did it quarterly. Well, you're, you're out of order. You're out of order. Uh, Tess. I just wanted to ask locations here or in the office. The board, board office. office. Wherever you want. Brian. Maybe instead of like trying to change everything and do a whole year of calendar, we do it quarterly. Because again, no one knows, like in October, there could be a giant DOT meeting that's scheduled on a date that, that conflicts with the community. Like things come up in our, in our community that become like- you're, you're absolutely right, Ryan, but we set a, the board set a calendar for the year. We want to set the calendar for the year for the committees. We don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow and find the world still here. We don't know what's going to happen. So it's just too much to try to, you know, this, we're going to have the meeting on the 30, 6.30. Uh, any more questions for Marty? No. <laughs> Somebody's ready to go home. Uh, Parks Department minute, as written. This, um, public session, Jerry, call it first. Three speakers, please. We have three speakers for public session. Mike Rutschman. Good evening. Um, I'm Michael Rochford, Executive Director of St. Nick's Alliance, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Frank Lang, our Director of uh, Housing, and Rolando Guzman, uh, who's the Deputy Director for Advocacy and is assisting with marketing. Um, we're very grateful to be able to speak tonight, and we're here specifically to 
present on our Grand Street project, 695 uh, Grand Street uh, specifically, and the marketing is open right now and will be until uh, December the 29th. And so we want to get the word out because, um, as you know, all the applications for local housing built with city funds go through the HPD website. And so it's very, very important that we get local people to apply because hardly a week goes by that someone doesn't come into my office looking for housing and they haven't applied and they're not on the list and there's very little you can do for them. So uh, we encourage as many people as possible locally to apply because the competition is so stiff with the citywide opportunity for people to apply, it's important that uh, our folks apply as well. Uh, Frank is um, talk a little bit about the building, just very briefly, and then Rolando will speak about the marketing. Frank. Yes, thank you. We'll be brief. Uh, this is a 51-unit building that the community board reviewed and passed during ULERF back in uh, 2015, I believe it was. Uh, it's a new construction. It's built on the former one-story building that actually St. Nick's developed 35 years ago on Grand Street. Uh, the building will have ground floor commercial. We currently are still uh, finalizing who that commercial tenant will be. And the uh, marketing are for 38 of the 51 units. One apartment is for a uh, employee, and there are certain units that are dedicated to come from formerly homeless families that's part of the city requirements. Um, the building, as you can see, it, I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's, uh, I think the scaffolding came down today. Uh, it's brick on the outside. You can turn next. In, in, uh, I think you can just do the down. Uh, and uh, it has a garden in the back, uh, the second floor for the tenants. And then, um, and it will be, uh, um, as the board requested, there's extensive bicycle parking and stuff for the tenants, and there will not be a liquor light, uh, a cabaret or any other thing in the ground floor. That was another, that was another thing we were allowed a wine and beer license in the event that there was a full restaurant, but we're following all those kind of things very closely. Hi everyone. Um, uh, hi, uh, I'm Rolando Guzman. Uh, I'm the uh, Deputy Director for Community Preservation. And one thing that I just want to make sure that people know is that we want to have as many community members to apply for this. Uh, we've been doing outreach to almost every single community center, daycare center, senior centers. Uh, and also, we're going to have a community meeting. It's going to be on December 19. It's going to be here at 6.30 p.m and uh, we're gonna have uh, hard copies of the applications in case people want to apply, and we're gonna help screen. However, though, you can go online tonight and go directly to Housing Connect and apply. I think that's the faster way, uh, but again, if somebody doesn't have access to internet, uh, we will be happy to have applications uh, here on the 19. Uh, we kind of misplaced the flyers, so, if, uh, if anyone happened to see this flyer on the table, maybe we left it uh, around. Uh, but uh, we are looking for him. Uh, we'll pass it around. But remember, it's going to be on December 19, 6.30 p.m. right here, okay? Uh, again, uh, the, the only way that we can make sure that people have access to this is by applying. So uh, that's the biggest priority. Thank you. Thank you. We'd, we'd, we'd like to thank St. Nick's for the refreshments they supplied for us tonight. Thank it's you really so thanks much. Thanks to Jen. <laughs> We're thanking St. Nick's. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I th thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jen, I, for, for getting I, the refreshments. I, I just want um, to uh, thank the board again for its support of the Greenpoint Renaissance Enterprise Corporation. And tonight, uh, Amanda is here, Eric uh, Tisch, and, um, and uh, Jan herself. Uh, see, I don't know if there's any other GREC members out there, but uh, for the past two months, uh, we've been working on the application for the Greenpoint High Hospital Redevelopment. Uh, it goes in on Thursday. Uh, the committee, the GREC committee, has been meeting uh, through that period of time and will continue to be engaged in the process. So we thank you for the board's support. We're competing against uh, for profits, and it's the way the city set it up, but uh, we, we hopefully um, have done a good job and, and we'll come out on top. So we want to thank the board again for all its uh, support. Thank you. Marty, Marty, please. These people are speaking. How are you going to have a meeting in the middle of the floor? Next speaker, please.
Hi, Katie Knopfletarski speaking on behalf of North Brooklyn Progressive Democrats uh, concerning attendance. In order to ensure a strong community board with bylaws which promote diligent attendance, we'd like to make a few recommendations. We believe that the bylaws should be amended verbatim as recommended by the borough president's office. The bylaws committee, when they met a few weeks ago, made an additional change by replacing must with should. We believe that the recommendations on the bylaws committee should be modified to restore the original BP legal office language to ensure that it's absolutely correct. Um, following the by next, following the bylaws adjustment vote, we believe CB1 should immediately remove move to remove non-attending members according to proper procedure, including the 2017 from the of the current year, as Will just mentioned. Um, in addition, given the voluntary nature of the position, the importance to the community, the CB's poor attendance track record among some of its members, we believe we recommend the following changes be made to the bylaws to bring CB1 in line with Democrat with Brooklyn's other community boards. Um, this recommended language is taken from CB3 bylaws, Article uh, 12. And that is three absences from meetings of the board called in any six month period during which the community board is in session shall be sufficient cause for removal. So that's three absences within any, within any six months. And in addition, three absences from a, board, from a members appointed committee meeting of the board in any six month period shall be, shall be sufficient cause for removal. And also we're asking that tonight a date be set for um, attendance um, and bylaw committee to meet again um, so that these things can be really pinned down so there's so the time so that these can be brought to vote um, the next January full board meeting. Thank you. Hi, my name is Francoise Olivas. I've been a resident of Greenpoint for 12 years and I'm on the steering committee of Friends of Transmitter Park. I'm also a new mom and very active in the parent groups in our neighborhood. Thank you for taking the time to hear our concerns. As you may remember, we have had some strong negotiations with the developers of 1315 Greenpoint Avenue. This is a property that's abutting Transmitter Park on the eastern border, which was granted a zoning text amendment enabling the developers to build one consolidated 11-story residential building that faces the park. A little over a week ago, it was discovered that the developers have filed a demolition permit. The Friends of Transmitter Park have reached out to the Parks Department and Council Member Levin's office to get a clear understanding on how the developers' demolition and construction plans um, as we know, the building, it has asbestos and lead paint, and this process will have an enormous impact on our park. Per the developer's agreement with parks, um, which the Friends of Transmitter Park recently submitted to the board, um, the developer is required to submit <coughs> a construction safety plan and schedule to the CB1 Land Use Committee Chair and Parks Commissioner. We want to understand how the developer plans on protecting our park from these contaminants construction hazards and how the air quality will be monitored and how contact, how contact with the community can be made if issues arise. Additionally, we also ask the board support in not allowing construction to be done on weekends. Our community is already overrun with development and our park is the neighborhood's only piece of green tranquil space. The play playground, which is adjacent to the 13 Greenpoint um, Avenue property is highly used on the weekends and we want to make sure that we'll still be able to use it as well as that we can safely use it with our children. Um, we respectfully urge the community board to act on the community's behalf to help protect the park and its users. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, Councilman Renozo's office, Alexis Rodriguez. Hi, good night. Uh, my name is Alex Rodriguez from the Office of Council Member, and I have a couple of announcements. 
uh, from the office of the council member. And well, the first one is that the council member is expecting a child uh, during uh, November, uh, December the 25th. Uh, also, they just mentioned about the L train uh, coalition. We had a press conference today, this morning, at Union Avenue and Hope, and we were demanding about the transparency and also bring um, the MTA and DOT to the table. Uh, thank you, Eric, for everything that you have done uh, also in this committee. He was also there today. Uh, also, we have the Cooper Park Next Gen on December the 12th. That will be a town hall about the proposal that NACHA has to build in the parking lot in the, um, I will say that that's the baby voice. And today we just met with the NYCHA and also the Tenant Association, the Executive Committee meeting uh, today, discussing that before the town hall with uh, Ms. Foster. Uh, also, uh, Los Sures and South Fit Street Block Association will have a forum on the pollution that comes from a bakery uh, in Broadway that will be on December the 12th, also at uh, 6 30. Uh, PM at 366 Hughes. Let me see which other announcement do I have. Oh, so yes, uh, what we did also in November, like I mentioned in the previous um, uh, meeting, the community board meeting, we had the dinner for the homeless shelter that is located at Metropolitan Hotel. And after that, we had a committee meeting here in the same place to discuss about the safety and also uh, other issues that the community had about that shelter. Um, we also did a turkey giveaway uh, to a couple of uh, tenant association in our district. And for last, uh, we'll go to the Right to Know Act. Uh, we, that's the bill that the council member is trying to pass, uh, is to consent from the NYPD before uh, they do a stop and freeze or like a search. So he's still in meetings, uh, working on that, uh, trying to pass it at the end, before the end of the year. And also, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's the, the last thing about the right to know right now. So thank you so much. Uh, nice. Thank you, Alice. Um, this attorney's office, Acton Eric D, uh, Gonzalez office, Jonathan Bombo, ben Pombozo. Good evening, everyone. I bring greetings from Acting District Attorney Eric Gonzalez. And just, uh, my name is Jonathan Pomboza. And just real quick, uh, if you have any public safety or quality of life concerns, feel free to visit or call our Action Center, which is in our offices at 350 J Street on the 16th floor. Uh, Walk-in hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the hotline is 718-250-2340. If you want to send an invitation, you would like a presentation from uh, one of our units, or anything related to resources from our unit that I can go to, you can give me a call at 718-250-2817. And then the, finally, we're now accepting applications for our high school internship program. It's in the mid, winter, and spring. So there's two sessions. There's a February one and an April one. And it's for juniors and seniors attending school and living in Brooklyn. And the I put out flyers throughout the, the desks. And if anything, you could just reach out to me at a at my phone number, 718-250-2817, or email me at p-o-m-b-o-z-a-j at brooklynda.org. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, chairperson's report, I'd just like to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy New Year, and I just want to let everybody know it's been a pleasure working with everybody this year, and I think we had a productive year, and I look forward to working with everybody next year, and hopefully we'll have an even more productive year. Thank you. <laughs> District manager's report, as written, old business, new business, old business or new business? Dear friends, Ramon Raimundi passed away last week. Yeah. Ramon Raimundi, yeah. he was one of the founders and, uh, of the original community board in the struggle for community control of schools in the late 60s, early 70s, and then, con then went on and became, I think, on the first board of Woodhull Hospital when Woodhull Hospital opened up. And it was just had a history of public service. And I think they'll be making an application to the board uh, to request the naming of the street. He's, he was on the street for over 50 years at the South Second between. Uh, Avamari and Marcy, so we're following up with the with the 
council member in the board, but just an extraordinary guy. And sometimes we don't know about this unless it gets written down, but he was just uh, a very critical player for a very, very long time here. And, uh, I just want to uh, let everybody know that the People's Firehouse uh, is having, we're having our holiday party <coughs> here in December 15th, Friday. Uh, and we're having it this time, instead of at our office, we're having it at Yarka Hall, which is um, across the street from the pool, from, from the Met Pool, because we just finished the uh, rehab and we're going to sort of christening for the, uh, the rec center. And I just want you all to know that we're, we're honoring Ryan for her lifelong work as a, an, an activist. And so. Wow. Uh, so uh, you know, you might want to just uh, show up, you know, to get Ryan to support. She's kind of shy, I think, so it might be nice to go. If you come, it would be great if you can bring a toy because we bring it and if you bring children bring kids because we have santa coming and and you don't have to be you know you don't have to be celebrating christmas and any all kids are welcome we give toys to all the kids uh, we don't look to see if you've brought a toy with you or not so it's certainly not mandatory to come but if you wrap wrap the, the, the woman who does the organizing has <laughs> says that she would prefer to have it wrapped and then put on it don't let me, how about, don't, well, if I get in trouble for this, I get in trouble. Put girl or boy, or put either, you know. But, You're in uh, trouble. <laughs> so I'm in trouble. So um, in any case, if you don't want to put whatever, girl or boy, you don't have to <laughs> bring a toy. And you don't have to bring a toy. And we have food. My band will be playing. And um, we've got disco music. That's nice. Disco music. Wow. We've got disco music, not disco music. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, DJ. I don't know what kind of music he's going to play. It's going to be music and lots of food and fun. It's nice. And Ryan's going to be um, getting two different colors. Tell what's the date again? I'm sorry. What's the date again? Uh, December 15th. It's a Friday this year. The day after the Lasuras party. Yes. So you can go party to party. Yes. Lasuras <laughs> legal services for you. When is yours? Same day. We're together. We're doing it together. December 14th. No, you're the 14th. So we have to go to both. That's what they said. Let's go to both. Yeah. It's one, pa it's one party together. Let's see what everybody's doing. More fun for them. Where is it? It's at Yorkville Hall. I have 302 Fed Street. It's 270 Fed Avenue. It's right across the street from the, the Met Pool on Bedford Avenue. It's a senior citizen for, uh, residence that we built and that, we've, uh, that we run. Rabbi Dederman. We are so going to announce we are having a meeting on Thursday. We're having a meeting at the board office to set an agenda for housing. We all know that housing is the most important issue. And, and uh, <clears throat> we have to set an agenda for next year, trying to make some sense what we want to accomplish and try to to set up meetings accordingly. So please <coughs> come and let's talk about an agenda. We left this open. We didn't put any issue, just agenda for next year. Because if we organize, then we are going to accomplish something. So Wait, what date, Brian? That's uh, Thursday. 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 What time? Six six thirty. Yes. 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 Um, I'd just like to touch on what uh, Francois from Friends of Transmitter, uh, the issue she brought up regarding the uh, development that's going to take place next to Transmitter Park. And that, um, you know, remember the whole, there was a text amendment that came through the board and it was approved over the summer allowing to build, you know, one building facing the park, 11 stories. And um, we found out they filed their demolition permit and per the restrictive declaration that's attached to the deed, you're supposed to uh, present a uh, construction, you know, park safety plan and construction schedule. And you're supposed to report it to the Parks Commissioner and to the Land Use uh, Chair of Community Board 1. And so I just kind of wanted just to make the, the board aware. And the <coughs> transmitter already uh, sent out um, a notification. And they're 
uh, communication with the parks, but it's a situation that also affects, you know, the areas, you know, clearly, you know, parks and waterfront and potentially environmental because of, um, you know, it's, um, you know, right next to the park and there's asbestos removal and lead and just whatever else is going to be kicked up and potentially, um, I don't know if construction sheds will be erected and they'll have to go inside the park because it's literally right next to the park and next to a playground. And so um, I think at the very least, um, I don't know if the board can actually just can send a letter, just making sure there's continual communication between parks and the developer and uh, Council of Levin, or maybe going further and having a meeting or hearing, maybe with the developers, um, you know, when they're devising this plan, just make sure that you know, the community has a voice and the park users are, you know, uh, feel comfortable with what's going to happen. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Uh, any anybody else have anything? Is that something we can vote on? Does that, how does that? How do we? How do we do what he's asking? Well, he has. Some, you, you're talking about bringing the committee. You're talking about meeting. Uh, you. Well, you want to send a letter? Well, also not now, right? right? You're not talking about now. You're talking about once they get started. Well, also, I guess we're just starting a discussion about you know the need to bring in other committees besides the land use committee, like parks. Environmental or public safety. Parks. Mary. So I got an email that Steve sent. Uh, Councilman Levin's office was also on the email. Uh, Councilman Levin's office has reached out to the developer and their attorney. We're waiting to hear back from them. They did file uh, a request for a parks permit for demolition. Um, we've been discussing with them what the impact on the parks might be. Um, and so we don't think that they'll have to actually put a shed in the park. 